I'm nervous. Uh, Jimmy O from Joe Blow, and I am here today at Descanso Park. Descanso, right? Descanso. Jimmy O from Joe Blow, and here I'm. Jimmy O from Joe Blow, and I'm here to talk Kingdom of the. This is it. I promise. Jimmy O from Joe Blow, and I'm here to talk about the new Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, coming to you. And right now, I have a little friend to join me. Check this out. Hi, Jasper. First of all, gosh, really nice work in this. Oh, thanks. Um, I want to start with you. This is a such an interesting role because you go through quite a transformation. What is it? What was the preparation like in finding this this Nova and getting into that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, initially it was about like when I read the script, I was concerned with it just becoming all about. Um, you know, her lies and her deceit. And I needed to find more than just that. And so it was largely about me creating a backstory with Wes and the producers, because a lot of that they hadn't even figured out themselves. Hmm. So it was asking all these, you know, I had wrote down tons and tons of questions and getting the answers for those. And, and coming up with a lot of it myself in regards to, you know, the people that she's loved in her life. And, and that helped inform a lot of what, what, I, what May, you know, May's decisions in the film. But then, you know, there was also so that, uh, um, you know, initial thing that I had to figure out of how is May going to play a feral human? Because it's like two layers, you know? And so that was basically, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want it to become too perfect, too um, alike to the feral humans, because she's she doesn't know exactly, you know, how they move. She doesn't have someone like Elaine, yeah. you know, teaching her how to be one. So, um, <laughs> so I basically it was about me just kind of like being very kind of like, you know, physically kind of smaller and and just and and a lot more like wide-eyed and, and kind of like rabbit in headlights, and um, and. Uh, and, and then, you know, you notice that her run is different to the feral humans who have who had a very specific type of run. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of... It was like basically being me being a kid again when I used to pretend to be animals, you know? That's basically what I was doing as May. That's awesome! Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you don't pretend to be an animal. You are, you're an animal mm -hmm. here. Wow. What, what, what was that like? Did you ever think... What kind of detail went into you as an actor? I need to do this. I need to make this... a a character that people actually relate to. Right. I mean, I mean, every every bit of detail that you that you'd give to a normal character. You know, you figure out uh, the the backstory of the character. You figure out what what's driving him, what he, what what his what his tensions in life are. Like you know, every every kind of psychological aspect you 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 delve into, and that's what informs the physical aspect of of the role. You know how Noah stands and, and how Noah speaks comes from the things that, that you know, are, are, are t tormenting him in life. You know, his, his, so, for instance, the, he has kind of a transformation over the film and, and, and when I, when I begin the, the movie, he's, he's very much a kid and very unsure of himself yeah. and, and kind of, you know, down here and, and, and that's, that's from the pressure that he feels from his dad, you know, and, and, and from living in this kind of very traditional village. Um, you know, it, you, you do the same thing. Performance capture is, is, is just acting, um, but then you have this technological element on top of it. So, yeah. Well, as I said, as you were giving me that answer, I was like, yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> that's really, I mean, you go to training school, you learn to be an ape. Right. How amazing was that? What? Oh my God, so much fun. It's so fun. Like, she, she, she said, uh, Elaine earlier, uh, that, was our, that was our movement coach, yeah. Elaine Gautier, uh, who led us through, started kind of with like physical theater exercises and, and just getting us in our bodies and then helped us develop these these characters and and find the bodies and 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 get the behaviors of of apes um but always coming from a character point of view and we would we would we would go on these improvisations that would last for hours where where we would we would just get lost and and find the relationships between the characters in an organic and 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 really kind of magical way 
Well, speaking of chemistry or characters' relation, uh -huh. the two of you, is it's really lovely because it could have easily been a little, mm, but there's a real, real connection here. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about finding that and uh, working with all the extra stuff that goes along with that? Yeah. Um, well, you know, we've been saying, I feel like the first time that was kind of realized was in the was in our chemistry read, which actually was over Zoom, mm. which is never an ideal thing to have a screen between you when you're trying to, you know, do a chemistry read. Um, <laughs> but but it didn't really seem to matter. Like there was just this sort of connection. It just it just the puzzle seemed to fit, and um, and so I think that 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 you know that then just was what we continued on with through shooting and there was just I felt like I could very much lean on you and you know you're a very generous actor and so there was just a trust there you know um, which was which was you know exactly what you want when, when you're having to do most of your scenes with someone yeah now obviously this franchise is I mean it's iconic mm -hmm. what was it what was your reaction to getting oh I'm going to be a part of Planet of the Apes and this this big world what, what, how did you I mean, it was, I w it was, in like, incredible. I, I, I couldn't, I very much went into that screen test, my last audition. I already told myself I didn't have the role. And I just saw it as, like, an opportunity to get to play that character for a day and to get to work with you and Wes for a day. And I was like, that's how I approached it and just to do what I love. And, and I feel like that took, took a massive amount of pressure off my shoulders and it allowed me to just enjoy the day and because no part of me thought I would get the role, you know, so, but, but, it, but you, that sounds really negative, but it actually wasn't, because I put the focus more on, like, the love for it yeah. and, the, and, the, and the love of the opportunity of, of just that day. So, so but then to Makes find out... Makes it easier to just yeah, do the work. Yeah, exactly, and I feel, feel that even on set when we're, you know, when you're, sh when you're shooting, to, to take off the pressure sometimes is, is gets the best performance. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so, yeah, but then when I found out that I actually got it, I was like, well, that's the icing on the cake, isn't it? Pretty happy. <laughs>I just can't imagine getting in the concept of, okay, I'm going to play an ape and this is all going to be changed and I'm not going to look like myself. How did you guys, how did you guys prepare for that? Like as an actor, what, what goes into that? We were so lucky that we had a team, yeah. a giant team of the most talented, wonderful human beings to help us get there. You know, so at first for us, it was, you know, we had to audition with the words that were written on the script, in yeah. the script that, that, that were beautiful words. So we got to interpret that as a human first. Then uh, luckily we both got the job. And then from there, we both went to ape school in Sydney, Australia. For six weeks. For six weeks. I, I got four weeks. I came in a little later. But we both had our own experience with ape school. And you want to tell them how it's broken down, like the way that Alain Gautier kind of breaks it down for us? Well, it's first amazing. I want to say what was really great about you coming in later, mm. do you know what I mean? It's like we sort of, even though I'm an orangutan and mm. we, is, it, it, we had orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and now the bonobo. And so by the time you came in, um, and like, cause you were like this, it was, it was such a great dynamic too, like to just, for us to like sort of build our sort of our clan and then have to like share with you. Like, I mean, so, so the process of, you know, we had, we had uh, diagrams of skeletons of, of like the, and, and, and the anatomy of the various apes that we were working on. Um, learning and Elaine is, is not only an incredible performer, um, but he's also a scientist, so like, oh. we, you know, and, and, and deeply, deeply um, committed to, he spends a lot of time studying apes, like just in, in general on his own, yeah. so he's very passionate about, about apes. Um, and so we would take physical information, like about like how, because of the, because of the, the rib cages and the, and the hips are, are in shorter distance, mm. you, you, you don't, there's not a lot of this, and so you really have, so we learn it, and you're learning how to, you know, walk on all fours. Use your use your your arms as feet sometimes, or like just like quadrupedaling. And um, and we did that. And then he would ask us questions, like so, help us find our voice. 
you know, how, because yeah. that's a whole other thing. Not only, yeah. okay, so like it'd be one thing if it's like, okay, we're just going to uh, become apes. Yeah. But we are, now we're, you're layering on language on top of that and language that doesn't want to sound human. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that that was, like the 68 movie. How, yeah, like how that, does the trachea yeah. of a bonobo create? human sound yeah. and so you look at it and you're like i remember looking at it going man that would be really hard to do it'd be hard to get that sound out so right. i felt like so as i was getting in the body you know and and alain was like okay you 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 got this he asked me a question and i was thinking about this and i was like i don't know what it is about you but i don't trust you and it was just this sound that came out and it was like pushing from the diaphragm trying to figure out how to get that sound out so that it could resonate on a plate in my head so that i can create sound and then when that sound came out he recorded it and he was like okay we're sending this to to west to the director and um we all had our own process finding it but it was grounded in the fact that Alain broke down those anatomical biological changes and then it informed the psychology, it informed the, the neurological, uh, the, the, the way that the synapses were firing off differently because we are different creatures now. And what, yeah. and, you know, and something yeah. that particularly was, that's a great point and to that end, particularly difficult for me is that uh, orangutans are very solitary and they, 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 they move very slow but efficient, do you know mm. what I mean? But yet my character, Raka, he, he speaks a lot sometimes in complete sentences. Yeah. So I had to literally figure out how I can break the, lang break the language down, but not sound like I'm a human being, even though I'm speaking rather elaborately. You know what I mean? So that took a great deal of work of like cutting off um, not, uh, elisions and saying, never saying can't and don't, always cannot and do not. And mm. we are almost formalizing, keeping the language somewhat formalized because it's relatively new. And, and then also how to make that register with my vocal cords and yeah. then, then where, where I would drop into and speak maybe down here because as opposed to up here in conversational and so but all those little that detail work um just to three-dimensionalize these 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 beings so that you know people have no problems accepting that i'm watching a talking ape you yeah. know like and that all goes into the hopper to and make to make to make the, it the coolest freaking thing about it is that when, when we both saw it, it, it we saw it separately but we both inv individually had the same experience we're seeing our friends that we have been working with. We all met as apes before we met as humans. Oh so my we're, God. we're seeing those apes. We spent countless hours improvising together as apes. And the cool thing about me coming in later was that when I came in and I got it together, Alain would, uh, I don't, because we don't get to uh, share uh, the scenes, we didn't get to do it a lot like this, but with the other apes, bring them in and then he wanted to see what would happen and immediately the hierarchy occurred and if they were afraid of proximus then i would explain to them why i'm doing what i'm doing that if we don't do this as quickly as possible if we don't attain get this information as quickly as possible we're going to end up back in cages. Humans used to put us in cages and they'd sit on the other side of the cages and eat popcorn and be like, <laughs> look, it's pooping, right? Yeah. And throw us food. Treated us like much lower beings. And, and uh, um, you know, so it was funny because a lot of those apes started to go, okay, well, you're starting to make sense. Aren't you the bad guy? And I'm like, no one's the bad guy. We just all have different <clears throat> perspectives. And then I would have to come in in, in like those exercises and and try to get them to remember the word of caesar the real caesar yeah you know what i mean and, but but with not look in a confrontational According way to rocco's yeah. interpretation just like you know. well the well the rock the the caesar that 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 my order and the caesar that came yeah, before yeah, said yeah. everybody that, that people don't know about 
And so, so like in these improvs, which is it only happened a couple times, we like to try to. Yes, he's not completely wrong, but there's also more to the story. Remember yeah. Caesar's legacy: Ape shall not kill ape. Human, and, and there was a time that humans and and apes lived side by side. Let us, let us, let us, let us strive but for a coexistence. That in but, itself, right. it's like that's what he learned through uh, through oral yeah. uh, or oral the, passing on of the story. But he doesn't realize that when humans and apes were living together, that they were in cages and that they were being experimented on in laboratories. Yeah. See, uh, Proximus knows that because I have a human teaching me. Wow, I, I just uh, love the yeah. debate going on right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a presidential debate. Yeah. 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 yeah, I would rather have that. That's a lot more fun. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 You know, if we could all just learn to listen to each other, like I yeah. think, I think if you had Proximus and 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 Raka together and. If you could just get them to listen to each other, just like in other uh, parts of this world right now, yeah. if, if people would just listen to each other, then perhaps we could find common ground. Yeah. Yeah. And it is my kingdom. We will learn. Apes will learn. I will learn. Wow, this is a lot to take on. Yeah. I mean, you, you're jumping into a franchise as well loved by many. Yes, indeed. But you had the experience with Maze Runner. What was it like kind of taking this on and what what, what were you hoping? Um, yeah, you're right. The Maze Runner things were good practice. You know what I mean? Just in terms of execution and, and craft and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I grew up on that 68 movie, you know, with Trout and Heston. And I love the previous trilogy. And you know, I think it's, it's been talked about a lot where I was a little bit hesitant to jump into something like this, because yeah. why? Um, the other ones were, were so well concluded. And you know, I feel like the only way it would work is if we could sort of get some distance from it and, and try to do our own story. You know, to do a new chapter in this, there's been 10 movies now, yeah. including us. Um, you know, we just wanted to make something that felt like we could stand on our own two feet acknowledge and draw from the, the previous movies we you know a lot of the stuff of caesar is in our movie right yeah. it's a it's a part of it we don't rely on it but it we use it to kind of um um you know help our story you know what i mean um but uh all we hope for is that it feels like it's a worthy addition to this awesome legacy of movies you know well, what I mean? that's it i think for sure it is uh do you, you know, you 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 know, you're building a new a part of a new chapter to this franchise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you always know that would be focused mainly on the world changing and how it's affected humans and how it's affected apes even more so? Yeah, I think so. You know, we knew behind this was going to be the Caesar trilogy, yeah. but ahead of us was the '68 Charlton Heston reality, right? Yeah. So, so that brought with it certain requirements, you know. We, we saw in war what happened to humans, you know, what was going to be happening to humans. They were gonna lose their ability to speak and turn feral. That's their explanation for how we got to the feral place in the, the 68 version. Mm. Um, so there were certain parameters and guidelines that were, you know, on the edges. They weren't, they, I didn't feel boxed in by any, by any means, but getting the distance from that, that, that place, we got to explore all kinds of cool new things, you know, with like what's been lost in the time, you know, what, what's changed. Not just the, the, the world around us, the human world, how it's slowly eroding away, becoming that, that world of the 68 version where you can't even see our existence anymore, right? We got to just kind of play with those, that beautiful, haunting kind of vision of, of, of what's left, right? But also talk about, like, you know, what happened to the myth and legend of Caesar, you know, how it's been twisted, how it's been used, what's, gonna, what's been lost, you know? And that was fun. And then just also explore, like, as we as humans kind of, you know, advance through, um, towards today, you know, our history, you know, how are the apes doing that too? You know, how do, what kind of cultures are they developing and rituals and, you know, just other worlds. And that's ultimately what we try to do is just take people into a world that doesn't really exist and let people get swept away for, for two hours and 15 minutes. Well, the beauty of that is too, you have so much to take from the real world. And I love that you, you paid attention to what happens outside of the world, giving this a mm -hmm. grounded feel. Because this is absolutely, this fits fairly yeah. in li line with the last three. And mm -hmm. it, it's a grounded story about, th these are human characters, Yeah, sure. They are, they are basically humans, right? That's yeah. how you relate to them. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Talk about bringing in these new characters and kind of finding out where you, whose story you wanted to tell, mm -hmm. and how did you know it was these characters and, and this story? Well, we knew we wanted to make make it a, a younger ape this time, you know, mm -hmm. to do kind of a classic sort of coming of age story. That felt right to to not try to just repeat the kind of Caesar storyline, that Pinocchio to Moses storyline, you know. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of fun to have a character that didn't know anything that we could kind of, you know, be alongside him as an audience, rediscovering a world, you know what I mean, learning the truths about things. Um, yeah, so that felt like a, the right kind of, t it gave us this kind of adventure tone, I guess, you know what I mean? And the truth is that while the movie starts as a, as a, as an ape story, it, we knew at the end it was going to end up as a, an ape and a human story, yeah. you know, and, and this human character would be the kind of little puzzle, enigma, mystery thing that we slowly unwrap and, and leave some questions open. You know, um, if we're lucky, that we'll be able to continue these stories and, and, and go into the stories about, you know, can ape and human live together? <laughs> that's the question, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And, and all the kind of drama and stuff that's going to come along with that, you know? Well, I love the fact that you have something, you added a so many new things to mm. the elements, but ultimately, you do. It is a, a hero's journey. Yeah, sure. And uh, how how did you know he was the right actor to take the role? <laughs> That's casting is an instinct thing for me. You know, I just I, you know I don't really overanalyze it. I just see him, you know, on tape, and it just it was him. You know, I mean, I definitely watched at tapes after that, but just it was like no, I've already we've got him. It's just one of those things, man. It was like it was like a miracle. <laughs> it just dropped out of the sky. How, who? How did you get someone to follow up Andy Circus? You know what I mean? Holy crap! You know what I mean? We thought it was going to be impossible, but but oh, and I think just did a fantastic job. And can you imagine the weight on his shoulders to yeah. follow that, to, to to carry this franchise, but follow in Andy Andy Circus's footsteps? Holy crap! But he did it, you know, with a real 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 courage and and uh, I think commitment and and um, and responsibility, you know, and and respect for what Andy did. He obviously has stories to tell about his relationship with Andy and stuff, yeah. but um, yeah, I thought he did a fantastic job. All the actors did, you know. Well, it's funny you say that because when I just, I just spoke to oh, you did. before you, you and I swear to God, I was watching, I was like, oh my God, this is a character. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he really is. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's how you do it, man. You find these people that you're like, that's them. I don't know if they can do this physical thing or not, yeah. whatever it is, it's like, it just feels like them. And I just trust that, you know, you talk to them, you know what kind of people they are. We, we only try to cast good people. We don't want problem, problem people on set. Yeah. It's not worth it in a movie. So you cast good people that you want to work with, you want to go in the foxhole with, and then you talk and you try to get them to see the same movie that you're seeing. And then you wind them up and you let them go. You know what I mean? And don't try to get in the way. And just, just if they kind of go off, of course, you just push them back around on course. But like they are authors of these characters, you know? And they, they know these characters better than I do, you know? I think that's a really good way to look at it. And I, I feel like a lot of times a director will be like, no, no, I want this exactly. I want this exactly. You seem to give that. That happens room. with animation directors where you, know, you really think about, I want this little turn, this timing thing. And you, you can't do that. They're not robots. You have to let chaos kind of filter into this process. And that includes in the camera work too. You know what I mean? You see there's a lot of spontaneous camera work in the, in the, in the movie. And it's difficult to do in this case. But um, yeah, it's just something about creating that kind of sense of life and spontaneity, and you feel like it's just unha it's happening in front of your eyes. You know what I mean? Well, it's difficult to find sometimes the spontaneity because you're also dealing with a lot of yeah, effects here. Yeah, exactly. You're dealing with yeah. monkeys that yeah. you're creating, and a lot of really difficult process stuff. You know, like yeah. people don't realize that I have to shoot the movie twice. You know, I have to shoot the movie with the actors, and then I have to shoot the movie with a clean plate, which is what the actual shot becomes, right? Wow. Um, because I can't necessarily, you can't always at least put an ape on top of that human because that boom is sitting here in front of all the shots and how do you get rid of it you can't a lot of times um, I try to do that where I can when like the actors are really engaging with each other like with May in particular I try to make sure it feels real for for her that I'm using she's really looking at Noah and that and Owen in that case but yeah it's a hard thing you know and we got really good at by the end but at, at in the beginning it was it was just pulling my hair out you know I'm used to getting 30 40 setups a day you know I'm getting 12 on this one so we have to be much more efficient, you know, and much more careful with what we're shooting, and you know, spend the time where we think it's worth it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I like you mentioned earlier the, the the design of showing the world as it is now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God, and it, yeah, the details in this is really outstanding. That yeah. I noticed the street lights, all that thing. <laughs> sure. That what yeah. what kind of 
what kind of <laughs> what did you put into that? That's insane. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is a mix. It's, it's a place we found and then we enhanced. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's just kind of the same stuff we always did even in the Maze Runner movies, really. You know, just find those ways to keep something real in the frame. It always works. It always helps. You know, it helps the VFX be honest in a way. You know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so cool.